Today, the phrase uh, that Jesus uttered that I'm focusing in on is the phrase, it is finished, from John 19.30. You know, I'm a professor at Master's College and Seminary, and uh, one of the cool things about being a professor is you get to be a part of a lot of graduations. And, uh, you know, students who have worked hard for one, two, three, or four years are finally receiving their certificate or diploma or bachelor's degree. And many will exclaim on that day, I'm finished, I'm done. It's over, hallelujah. Uh, some may cry tears of joy, hug family, uh, and be grateful that the mission of completing training in theology and ministry is finished. People may give students flowers, gifts, and if they're lucky, some money in an envelope. I've been there myself as a student. The last time I graduated as a student, truth be told, while I was at the ceremony, I was just worried and anxious that someone was going to come to me and say, Josh, we, we've made a state, mistake. You, you can't graduate today. <laughs> Thankfully, that didn't happen. You know, as we look at this passage today, Jesus has reached his graduation. His mission is complete in, 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 in coming to the earth. That's why he could say, it is finished. But let's be honest, this story in scripture doesn't sound like a fun graduation with people hoopling and hollering and saying hallelujah. Jesus is on a, a cross. He's been betrayed by a close disciple, denied by another disciple, and finally mocked, beaten, whipped, and nails are put through his body and he's hung on a cross to die. This doesn't seem like a graduation. This seems like someone has failed at their mission. But not so with Jesus. You see, he's passed with flying colors. He's got an A plus because he's fulfilled prophecies from the beginning of time. Some of you know that. You see, from the book of Genesis, we know that humanity decided to choose sin over obedience. And that's been the story of all of us, hasn't it? But see, even in the midst of that early story of sin in Genesis, God had a plan. God promised the devil in Genesis 3.15 that while the, de the devil may wound the heel of a coming deliverer, there is a coming human deliverer who would wound the devil's head. You see, so Jesus was wounded in his suffering and death, but he wounded the devil and his evil purposes through his victory on the cross. Or if you look like a, a, a book like Leviticus, we are told how the consequences of sin are so devastating that a life would have to die so humans could live. Animals like lambs would be sacrificed, slaughtered. But this is something that was ongoing. It would just be perpetual. It would never end until Jesus, that ultimate lamb, was sacrificed for our sins. In Isaiah 53, verse 5, we're told that a, a coming Messiah would be pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities, and the punishment that brought us peace would be upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Jesus fulfills this promise of experiencing suffering so that we may have peace with God. You see, so when Jesus said it is finished, it tells us that God's plan of having a permanent solution to our sin problem is complete. It is finished. Jesus fulfilled all of God's promises in Scripture of a Messiah who would come to deliver us from our sins. You see, with sin in our lives, humanity, we have a broken relationship with God. But through Christ's death on the cross, we can finally be forgiven of our sins so that we can have right relationship with God, an unbroken relationship with God. You see, he paid the penalty for our sin on the cross. He died so we can live. That was Christ's mission and why he could say, it is finished. And for this reason, may I suggest that Jesus' graduation on the cross wasn't just for him. It can be ours too. His statement, it is finished, can, represents our potential graduation. We too receive from what he has done. You see, so many of us in our world strive to do good work, to somehow be acceptable or, or have a right relationship with God by our good works. But the Bible tells us that all of our righteousness are like filthy rags. 
Imagine if I were to tell a student who was interested in going to master's college and seminary and said, hey, don't, don't bother coming to the class. Just come to the graduation. And when you come to the graduation, another student will pass all the courses for you, complete the program for you. All you got to do is come to the graduation. You're just going to receive that diploma. Well, well that, that, that's shocking, isn't it? It doesn't seem right that someone who has done nothing deserves so much. We don't deserve the benefits of Christ's work on the cross. But see, it's out of God's love and grace that we receive it because of what Christ has done. Jesus is offering a diploma with your name on it, saying forgiven and having a right relationship with God. All you got to do is stretch out your hand and receive it by faith, trusting Jesus with your life and asking him for forgiveness of sins. And you too can have a right relationship with God. Look, you don't have to change your lifestyle before coming to Christ. If you think that way, you're missing the point of what Christ did on the cross and what he said. He said, it is finished. You can't add anything to that. He accomplished what we can't do on our own. If you're a Christian, know this. Christ's pronouncement that it is finished means your salvation is secure. You can't add anything to that. Trust him who completed that mission because it is truly finished.